So as said before, in our application, we have a home page, which is completely not available in our pages of our test project. So I'm going to add a class here and I'm going to name the class as home page. And this page is going to be responsible for all our home page activities. Like it's going to hold my link for employee list, login or log off or hello admin, the username that you are seeing in here. So all these informations are going to sit in my home page. So this home page is going to be responsible for all of that. So as that said, I'm going to add some of the objects for my home page. So I have already created the objects for the home page. So I'm just going to basically copy paste some of the code and let's make this class as internal and I'm going to inherit the base page. Let's quickly inherit that and let's add the properties and methods which I'm interested in. So these are the objects which I'm going to look for. Let's quickly remove the unnecessary usings and I'm going to add the interface iWeb element as well. All right. And then there is a get link text method. So this method is something which I have implemented in my extensions class of the web element extensions. So this method is basically going to return me the text of my hyperlink. So let's quickly add that method as well. So public static string get link test and this of i web element of element and this is going to return me the element text so this is what this method is going to perform and then if i go back to my homepage.cs and quickly add the extensions you can see that the error will be gone so these are the object for my home page so my home page now has the login employee list and the user that you are seeing in in my link hello admin so all these options are here right now and of course you can add the log out as well so i can just copy this and i can paste it here for the log off i can just say lnk log off so this is my homepage.cs and once i log in and once i click this employee list it will bring me a employee list page. We have already created the employee list page, but the name of my class is actually not the one which is matching in. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to replace this. Maybe I'm going to rename it to employee list page. And also I'm going to update all the references and let's make this class as internal. This is going to be employee list page. And here everything is pretty much fine. And this create employee page as of now, let it be. And within this login page.cs, as you can see here, we actually have this login link, employee list link. Basically, these are no more required. So I'm going to completely delete them out. The only objects which is present in the login page is username, password, and the login button. Remember me, we have not used yet. So don't worry about it. So username, password, and the login button. And you can see we're getting some error here like click login link because the click login link is not available in my login page. So I'm going to completely remove it and I'm getting an error here for the employee page is because the page name is actually employee list page. So Visual Studio should have updated all the reference, but of course it did not. So we can leave it no problem and click employee list is actually available in my home page, but not in the login page so i'm just going to copy this code and maybe cut this code and i'm going to paste it in my home page all right seems like everything is okay now and we can write one more method maybe to perform the click operation of the login because in our feature we have an option here like then i click the login button so the login button is actually going to sit in a different method altogether so this line of the step is basically for entering the username and password and not for clicking the login button. So I'm just going to remove it and I'm going to save it. And then I click the login button is a separate line altogether. So this BDN login.submit is not required. So I'm going to delete this line and I'm going to create a new method and I'm going to paste it here. 
So once I click the login button, then it's going to return me the home page. So that's what I'm doing in here. So btn login submit, and then it should return me a home page. So we are pretty much good to go for writing our step definitions right now. So what I'm going to do is I will go to my login dot feature and right click this generate step definitions. I'm going to click this option. So this will generate step definition skeletons for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to generate a new file altogether. I'm going to copy all these methods to the clipboard and let's go to the steps folder, right click, add new item. And here I'm going to select this step definitions if you want to, but I would say just select the class and give a name. Let's call this as login steps. So the good practice is always try to give the steps as the suffix of the name so that you can easily identify which steps it is going to sit in. So I'm going to select login steps.cs and I'm going to hit add. So this is going to create a new class for me. Just make this as public for now and add a binding. So this binding is actually coming from your techtalk.spec flow. Just add this reference and remove the unnecessary usings which will make your class even more cleaner. And just paste these step definitions which is the one which you copied from the login.feature. Alright, and now you can see there are some features and it says given I have navigated to the application and given I see the application open, I click the login link and all those things, which is great. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start adding some code for this. As you can see, now we're going to end up into a small problem. This login steps, if you inherit the base page here to perform the operation, then it's more like violating the rules of the framework development. The reason is if you only implement this base page, only then you can actually use the current page is equal to get instance and then you can perform all the operations required for your step definitions. But that's again going to violate your rules of framework. You should not use the base page in here. If you use the base page, then this class was actually meant for our pages in our framework. So whichever page you create, then all these pages should implement the base page class. But since this is a steps and if you try to inherit the base page for your steps, then this is not going to make any sense. And for the usage, if you try to break the rules, then of course you can break the rules of your framework, but that's not the best practice in industry. And many of the people will try to break the rules by keep on inheriting different classes, which doesn't make any sense for that particular class. So for that reason, we have a separate class in our base folder called base steps.cs. So this base step.cs is basically the class dedicated for our step definitions, which we left unattended while we were discussing the base of our framework development. So we're going to make use of our base step class right now. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to make this class as an public abstract class of base page and as you all know that the base page or the browser or whichever classes that you have in here are actually inheriting from the base class, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to inherit from the base class. And now what I can do is I can use the base step class to be inherited in all the steps which I'm going to create in future and right now. So I'm going to call the base step. And if you even inherit this base step, you will have the current page and also the get instance or the current page or as all these methods. The reason is the base step is actually inheriting the base class and the base class has all these methods, which are is used for performing the page navigation operations. So now we have this base step, but what is this step basically doing? It says given I have navigated to the application, meaning we are navigating to the application only from this method. But in our previous test cases, if you just concentrate a little bit, you can see that in our unit test 1.cs, we basically try to navigate to the application by means of this hook initialize.cs. It has our initialize setting and navigate site method. 
And if you go to the navigate site method, basically it just navigates to the particular site using the go to URL of settings.aut. But in the spec flow world, given I have navigated to the application, then that particular step should perform the navigation of our application. Where here is the one you need to call your navigate page method. So if we call our navigate page, it will not appear. And the reason is because the particular method is actually available in our test initialize and which is available right here in the test initialize hook and this is where the navigate site method is available so what i'm going to basically do is i'm going to copy this method and i'm going to paste it for now in my base step.cs so if you do this you can add the functionality of the, the site navigation alone in your base step so let's add this and I will tell you how to make use of this navigate site in other places as well. So for now, just bear with me. I'm going to add this method in here. I'm going to save it. And once I go back to my login step.cs, I can call the navigate site and I can do something like this. So once I navigate to the site, we are ending up to the home page. So for ending up to the home page, we are doing like this current page is equal to get instance of home page and let's quickly add the reference of the pages all right so now this is going to return me the current page as the home page and then the rest of operation i can keep on doing from there